Hey, this week on Bros, Bibles, and Beer. It would be worth piggybacking those two verses together instead of like telling kids like, you're terrible. You're worthy of destruction. What the author is trying to say in that passage is if you say all the right things, but it doesn't show up in any way in your life, then do you even have faith? It's almost like a confession. Yeah. Truth wants to come out. Yes. Oh my God. Dude, that is... My heart is pounding. He's describing his subconscious coming through, trying to do it. And it's... Is it? Or we see that happen in real time? Yes. You don't want to think you're perfect and that you've got it all put together necessarily because everybody stinks and we just need to acknowledge our our Uh, You spit on your mic and it's sitting right there. Did it really? (laughs) Oh my gosh, that's great. That's great. Uh, Welcome to Bros, Bibles, and Beer Podcast. I am Andy McCraw, joined by Zachary Crater. Here I am. Where's Jeffrey? I don't know where Jeffrey is. I heard he's dodging the cartel. (laughs) Down in the Mexico. We are joined by producer Dave Ritchie. My name, Jeff, (laughs) 6.2. (laughs) <laughs> you said my name jeff 6.2 that's what i heard yes what does that mean it's my height oh, six. oh okay <laughs> well point two is not well you know we're not on the metric system dave and we as a contractor be. you should know better uh, six feet, 20% towards seven. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guys, metric jokes. Am I right? Yeah, Jeff's, yes. Jeff is dodging the cartel is what I heard somewhere in Mexico. Yeah, down in Cabo. Uh, my daughter is down there as well, enjoying uh, the, the, the stuff down there. I don't know what to say. You know, hopefully leaving room for the Holy Spirit with their boyfriend. Yeah, let's hope so. I think uh, she she is of legal age now, though. <laughs> she may have had a pina colada that she told us about. Ooh. I know. Nice. It's fancy. It's tasting the devil's fruits. <laughs> yeah, 18's legal down there. Yeah. Well, okay. So. 18's legal over... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> to drink. <laughs> to drink, Zach. To drink. Okay. Hey, uh, so we've gotten some really great feedback and responses from the last... Um, from the last episode. By the way, uh, listener, if you're just tuning in right now, please like and subscribe, all those things. Um, Those are great for us, but honestly, just let one other person know. If uh, this is a podcast that you enjoy, tell one other person. Send them a link. Press that little share button. It's helpful for the podcast. Helps us grow. Yep. Okay. Um, What do we want to get into today? Well, we do have have a reel that blew up for us. Oh, yeah. For us, like from our perspective. Uh, yeah. Our humble following of 16 or 1700 at this point, but growing every day because of this reel. Uh, we'll get to that in a few minutes. Okay. It's involving a former guest who s- used some language that not everybody appreciates when she was talking about a worship song that she really doesn't like. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. And so but we we didn't, when we did that episode, we didn't. Break. It was at the end of the episode. We didn't break it down at all. There was no context behind the way she feels. It was just like drop a bomb and then walk away. You walk away. Yeah, so, yeah. so we'll we'll give that a little attention and then uh, maybe some other things. But okay. first, our last we're coming off the Robert Morris of yep. Gateway Church scandal. Yep. Episode, which there's already developments that we're not necessarily going to touch on here, but there's a couple of shorts I found on YouTube that. Um, add a little color to this. So okay. without further ado, producer Dave, will you pull up the old picture in picture for us? Senor, thank you. I wish there was a better way to show shorts. I don't know when this was, but it was a few years ago. Okay. This is not totally recent. I was verbally abused. I was physically abused. And this other was not by my mother. I just want to make that clear, but I was abused as a child. So I know what it is to be abused. I was verbally So hurt people hurt people. Wait, did he just say he was he was only verbally abused? And physically abused. And physically. And I don't know if that physically was just like beating beat him up stuff. Just beat him up stuff. That's terrible. But you guys know the thing. Or if it was sexual in nature. Um I just found this. I didn't I didn't research it, but it was a li- it doesn't get him off the hook. No, it doesn't. Or what took place. It but. doesn't, but we kind of, I think you had said in the last episode that it. the chances are that this was, this came out of the blue with no, nothing preceding it. 
especially because he was younger, it occurred when he was like in his 20s. 25, 24. Yeah, like early mid 20s is super unlikely. So maybe he's kind of alluding to it in this in this clip there that there's something going on yeah. that had had caused him to start. Yeah. My point was people don't just sort of stumble into grooming uh, yeah. a girl or a, a boy, whatever. Yeah. That typically doesn't just happen and then, oh, we're done. I'm walking in purity, which right. is kind of the narrative of it. And uh. then the next one is a wait for it type thing. If okay. we watch it, it's about eight years ago, maybe a little more. Robert Morris speaking in his church, I believe, maybe as a guest somewhere. But uh, Dave, go ahead and fire that one up when you're ready. Has logged everything you've ever done, everything you've ever said, Your and everything keeps track of it, that's saying. ever been said to you, and everything you've ever seen or experienced. Your mind has it. Now, it you're thinking, where is it? Because I can't remember. <laughs> it's in your subconscious. Have you ever said, oh, what's, what's her name? It's, it's on the tip of my tongue. It's not on the tip of your tongue. It's, a, it's expression. It's in your subconscious. And you're try, it's there because it'll come to you a lot of times right before you go to sleep. Cindy, you know, it just comes out. Robert Morris is the founder okay, can, and senior pastor can, of Gateway you Church in Southlake. I've, I've, so... Oh. I got chills again. The first time I saw that is eight years ago. His accuser, if you don't know, her name is Cindy Klimashire. Yeah. And Whoa. he, yeah, that's the right face. Like eight years ago, <laughs> it's almost like a confession. Yeah. Truth With, wants to come out. Yes. Oh my God. Dude, that I, is. My heart is pounding. Like, oh. And there was another short I watched that was in the same ballpark where he doesn't use her name, but he's talking about confessing sin and like you're 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 free before God, but really you know what you did and you know it's not good. And there's a lot of like he's sort of confessing right now too, and this was in the past, but I couldn't I couldn't track that down again. But I mean, how likely is it that that's actually what was going on? I mean, do you think it's more likely than not? That this is like <laughs> he's describing his subconscious coming through, yeah. trying to do it, and it's is it or we've yeah. seen it happen in real time yes. with him not even being aware of it. Which is a brilliant thank you by leading by example, like illustrating your point with a real life example, Robert. Dude, oh that my is, gosh, that is uh, trippy, man. Oh man, it's hard. It's hard to believe. Um, and I'm not laughing because it's funny. It's not. It's just I, unbelievable. It's just, yeah. Uh, my body doesn't know how to process that. Gosh. Oh. Okay. Is there one more? I see a third tab up there. The third tab is the reel that oh, okay. is up to 110,000 and counting. As soon as it seems like it's slowing down, no, it two. just... 210. Yeah. Did I say 210? You said 110. This is cracked 200,000. Whatever. This is one of our most popular pieces of content. Yeah, this is true. Yes, it's 210. And still going so people love it people hate it okay so let's do a quick little setup here yeah you can bring it up dave and you can show we were talking to courtney lancaster courtney lancaster she was uh she had spent time at bethel um the 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 bethical bethel theological school <laughs> bethical. Bethical. let's get bethical bethical oh my gosh <laughs> people are like that guy is old um Bethel Theological School of, of Supernatural, Supernatural Ministry. Ministry. And uh, and she was on worship teams up there. And Anyway, so it was kind of interesting. I, it was good to chat with her and, and learn a little bit more about her experience. And she didn't seem too flustered about any of the stuff that people tend to get a little bit weirded out by the... Like, Gold dust falling from the ceiling. Yeah, and I think... Grave soaking. Yeah. That what was the other one. It didn't bother mm. her. I, I wish it would have. No, I'm kidding. So anyway, at but the, we're we're real life friends with her too. She and her podcast is called Heal Create, and her mission is helping creative people heal so that they can uh, move past their trauma in a way that allows them to flourish and create the things that that they were meant to do. Yeah, and so at the end of the podcast, I I think I just asked, hey, since we all do, we're all on worship teams together, and uh, in fact, we will be this weekend. Tune in uh, MVC on YouTube if you want to watch us 
melting faces for Jesus. The uh, the question that I asked her was like, and I think I just threw it up to all of us. Hey, what's the one? What's the one song that you're like, oh gosh, I hate, I cringe, I don't want to do this one on a Sunday morning. And somehow we got around to this topic, which wasn't exactly it, and and it was that people have a, uh, can have a problem with reckless love. And I can't remember, did she actually say that she didn't like playing this song? Yeah, and it was very quick. As you'll see in this, okay. she's like, yes, reckless love instantly. And that's why I'm like, I made a weird noise with my body. <laughs> it's like, ah. All right, Dave, pull it up. Let's watch this. Look at me in the same exact position. Name the one song that we refuse to do on a Sunday morning. Reckless Love. Oh, Ooh. I didn't see that coming. I don't deserve it. I couldn't earn I it. I couldn't earn it. F that. God is reckless. No, I don't care about that. I think he was reckless with me. He's like, I'll get you no matter what, girl. That's not uh, recklessness, though. That, to be honest, to is you. an argument I don't care about. Look, look at this I don't say argue. that to shut you down. I just, I've heard people argue about it. I'm not shut down. You can't shut me down. <laughs> you're just not using the right definition for the words. I've heard people argue about this song so much, and I'm like, you're arguing about the wrong f***ing thing. <laughs> ah, there it is okay name the one thanks dave so there that is and the thing if i had the follow-up I, I realized we i think we chatted about it afterwards like the follow-up that i wanted to say was okay i take issue with the the words i don't deserve it and the main reason is because i think the fact that that jesus died for my sins, for that our you sins. personally take issue with the yeah, don't deserve here's, here's part. Yeah, why, here's why I take issue with that that word. Clearly, clearly, God thought there was some some kind of value with me that, it, that I was worth dying for, and so that can be translated to, "Hey, uh, God believes that I'm deserving of His mercy, therefore He's He's doing that and He's extending that to me." Yeah, right. Does that sound does that sound okay, Dave? Sounds okay. Dave says it's okay. It is okay. So that's the part where I'm like, ah, I, I have an issue with it. Now, probably what most people freak out on, though, in that would be contradicting the I didn't earn it. That's the one, like, as if there's something that you can do to earn your grace. Or uh, yeah, earn salvation. But that one's sticky, right? Yeah. And what I want to say to there's tons of comments on that. Obviously, super polarized. The more generous ones are like, "Well, she's saved," so it, it almost doesn't. That's kind of my take. Is from the traditional Christian perspective, she believes in Jesus, yeah, in a classical way. And so, whether she earned it or deserves it or not, it do, it doesn't matter. Like, there's this weird thing that it's not weird. Wrong adjective. But most Christians, we feel the need to just sort of always remind ourselves, and maybe some people need to be reminded that you make mistakes and you need forgiveness, whether it's from your family, your friends. You're not perfect. Um, but there is a little bit of like, hey, let's keep beating. One of the things I texted with her tonight was, because I, I told her, have you seen that the reel is like blowing is blowing up? And she's like, no, I had no idea. I'm oh, like, no. well, don't read the comments. <laughs> don't go to the but comments. But you have easily, easily, easily the most watched thing of anything we've had. Yeah. And I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it. There's something about we need to remind ourselves through the majesty of worship that we suck. Yeah. And that's, that's not good overall. The important, I think it's a better to get to a place where you just know how much you're loved. You know you make mistakes, but you know you're loved and you're forgiven. And resting in that will allow you to flourish as a human in a way that constantly telling yourself you're a piece of shit, but you're forgiven. Good news. That's that's not a healthy way to operate. Although I make caveats for I know some people some you, you don't want to think you're perfect and that you've got it all put together necessarily. Because everybody's shit stinks, and we just need to acknowledge our our shits. Uh, you spit on your mic, and it's sitting right there. Did it really? <laughs> oh my gosh, that's great. That's great. Uh, and I checked the camera, and it was showing. <laughs> <laughs> Do I say something? I got excited. Oh, it's good. No, I repent of that. I I don't. 
I don't fully disagree with uh, anything that you said, other than it's good. I think it's actually good for all of us to recognize at some point in time that we do have we do have the need for salvation. That that and it's good for all of us to remember that we're not perfect. Should you live in guilt and shame your whole life? No, I'm not advocating for yeah. that. But perspective is there's really, a healthy way to to acknowledge your shortcomings. Perspective is super helpful. That's good because otherwise, then you don't you don't need God. What do I need God for? I'm fine. It it's it's not important. Um, I wonder if the way that 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 lyric is delivered. I um I didn't earn it. I don't deserve it because it's back to back so quickly. Do you think that people conflate those things or just just they like club them all together and don't realize that they're they they're very different concepts? Yeah, possibly. Because we talked about the like don't deserve it part, but the don't uh, I didn't earn it piece. I keep going back to thinking like, yeah, but what about the faith without works is dead? Uh, portion of James, I think that's that's in James where he's talking about that, and it's that that it's not necessarily earning it, but it is. Uh, it's not validating. I don't know what the word is that I want to use to describe that, but but at some level, what the author is trying to say in that passage is. Hey, if you if you if you say all the right things, but it doesn't show up in any way in your life, then do you even have faith? Yeah. So it could that be construed as like earning earning it? I'm stretching. I'm really stretching it. On this yeah. One. It's not. Maybe, but to- <laughs> maybe is your soft no. Um, <laughs> I like giving the softest of no's. Maybe. So tender. Right, Dave? Maybe. So tender. Uh, the <laughs> You mentioned James, and it, it there is this sense, and some, some people play the Bible against itself when they pit James against Paul. And I think there can be a decent case. Like the, I don't assume these people had the exact same opinions on all things theological. Sure. And there's great evidence throughout the Bible that they didn't. Um, and al- also... Th- the what you're going to be judged for finally is is not it's not a hey you made it grace has saved you your repentance saved you it's what you did in the here and now now people wait, le- wait. in revelation what you did here and now is you're going to be judged according to your works now what we do as christians that we the royal we i don't hold this position currently is we marry that with other passages that are talking about the grace. There's nothing you can do for salvation. You're just, you're forgiven when you repent and you're saved. Um, so we sort of like interpret those together, but they're very, on their face, they're very different, at least. On the paper, as you read them, repentance, salvation through repentance, faith alone is different than revelation. Hey, at the end, you're going to be judged for what you did. And those who did the work right are going to be saved. And those who didn't are not. Yeah. Although it does go on to say, this is a sidebar, that uh, death and hell will be thrown into the lake of fire to be destroyed, which is a fun little potentially uh, universalistic uh, teaser. But we won't go there right now. Unless you want to. No, no, no. I had a thought, but it's... Uh, slowly falling into my glass of old-fashioned whiskey. Um, okay. Any thoughts on that, Dave? Did you earn your salvation? Well, I was the line that says we don't deserve it. Yeah. Do, do, do we automatically deserve if we take God out of the context or out of the equation? Like, what do we so deserve? usually what I like to do. Keep going. I'm just kidding. Like what, like, you know, people say, you know, oh, I deserve respect. Do you deserve respect or do you earn respect? Interesting. So does that apply to the lyric and we don't deserve it? Or because God loves us and he's a loving God, do we automatically deserve it? That's why I think about like the earning versus conflating or earning versus deserving and conflating those two things. And so it, in my mind, it helps me to to separate them. Like a a father can believe that their child is deserving of their love, even or is 
yeah, they deserve to be loved, even if they don't act like it. You know, yeah. Even if they're yeah. not, even if they're not doing the things that they want to. I mean, like the prodigal son story also comes to mind. Like your kids, yeah. Like my kids, but like yeah, prodigal son goes does does all the wrong things. You know, double deuces to the dad, and um, so clearly, like by the definition didn't earn anything seems like he didn't deserve it but if he comes back and the father finds deep value in him still and deep value in him coming back and embracing him then that way does that not imply that he thinks he's deserving of that why would the father throw his way his love away on something that just isn't worth it not only that but it it's almost beside the point whether he deserves it, he doesn't deserve it by worldly standards. But the father is like, hey, but, but, you don't, your your mind. There's, that's there's the n- thing. He, there's no there, indication that the father is waiting for him to come back and show proper repentance before he's loved and accepted back. The father's disposition toward the son is always, oh, I, I just hope he comes back. There's nothing like, well, let's make sure you properly repent. It's I, just like yeah. he runs out to meet him before the guy even says anything. I'm trying to draw the connection between. Uh, the idea of deserving and the the attribution of value in the person. And so because I think you're valuable and and, and then then that alone me it, it implies that I think that you deserve this m- my love. Yeah. I th- and I do I think I do deserve your love. You do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's different than what you're thinking. <laughs> But honestly, I know we're different than God. God the Father yeah. is. A, I use the parent analogy a lot in comparison. Yeah, because I really do think, like, in our best moments, I've said it before, and I think it's worth repeating. You're forgiving your kid whether they ask for it or not. Yeah. Now there might be consequences and whatnot, and they, they may, might need to learn in a certain way. Yeah. But there's nothing about you that's like cast them out into the outer darkness, whatever that looks like in this world, until they repent properly. Um. Because you love your kid and you want them to flourish. Sure. And is God better than that? I like to think so. And if God is not better than that, and there is, because you do get in the Bible, you can find examples where it looks like God is different than that and God is harsher than that. But you also find beautiful portraits, i.e. the prodigal son, other things, um, where it, it just does just it bumps it up a notch to where i am very hopeful in in the goodness of god in a way that i could never match yeah and what's interesting about that too is that it it i i love that uh i love that parable because it allows uh, like that I, maybe that is a good definition or a good working definition or old pastor todd remember when you described how god's wrath is god giving you over to the consequences of your actions, mm-hmm. allowing them, and in some way, you you kind of see that demonstrated there. It's never really, uh, it's not talked about directly, but you could see that. Hey, the son wants all this stuff. Okay, I'm going to let you go do it. You're going to experience this stuff now. I'm giving you over to that. And he goes and he does it, and it's terrible, and he hates it. And then there is repentance. He does come back, and it's like, hey, I, I screwed up. I screwed up big time. I don't deserve to be here. Yeah, that's an interesting angle to look at it. The father, the son basically is like, well, well, I wish you were dead because I kind of want what, what's coming to me when you are dead. Yeah. And the father's not like, let me tell you why this is a bad idea no. and how this is not, this might backfire on you. The father's like, this is what you want. Okay. Go for it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's wild. And if you look at how do people learn, they learn through resistance and they learn through experience very often. Rare is it, anybody with kids knows this, especially through teenage years, you can give them the cheat code. I can tell you the mistakes I made yeah. at your age, and I can help you avoid them. Sometimes that works, but it's rare. Right? Yeah, occasionally it can. But for the most part, it's you telling them plus them experiencing the pain of their mistakes and then growing from it. Yeah. You need gravity, people. And that's gravity. You go to space and everything's easy. You're weightless. That's what I say every time I go to space. You start to die. This shit's easy. Look at this. 
Well, after an edible or two, I feel like I'm in space sometimes. <laughs> um, can some... Oh, you have a tablet. Can you look up yeah. John 316 uh, yes. and, and 317? Uh, yes. So, for God so loved the world... Or maybe I'm thinking of Romans 323 and 24. Romans 323 is one that we often teach our kids to remind them how shitty they are. <laughs> but we often miss Romans 324. Uh so do 316 and 317. That came to mind first. Oh, you first. want to do that one first, or which, which one do you want to do first? Whichever one's closer to your fingertips. Oh, I had Romans that dialed in. Do it. Hold on. Uh, now I deleted it. <laughs> Great podcasting. That's what this is. And I do remember, I do remember, extra word, I remember at this very house, I think your youngest kid yeah. got back from VBS and told you, Oh, we memorized a verse. And you're like, what's the verse? And it was the Romans passage. Yeah. Which is? Oh, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And then it ends right there. Would you read the next verse? Yes. If it lets me. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Jesus Christ. Now, why... As churches, VBSs and whatnot, we choose that one verse. You memorize that, kids. You drill that into your head. When there's a bigger context going there. Now, I, I am not denying that there are parts of the Bible that are problematic and, and seem to be against the universalistic direction that I'm currently inclined to. But it would be worth piggybacking those two verses together. Yeah. Instead of like telling kids like, yeah, you're terrible. You're worthy of destruction. And I don't believe that's true full stop, but I understand the traditional Christian Romans road gospel presentation of like you, there's nothing you can do to save yourself. And so you need Jesus. And, and some of that I, I believe in, in a way that I would probably interpret a little differently, but it is notable that we just, we, push that as Christians and this is related to the worship song. Yeah. You don't deserve it. You don't earn it. Let's make sure we remind ourselves about that daily. Yeah. And I I don't think it's healthy. There's probably healthier ways to do it, but Yeah. Ultimately, my kids knowing I love them no matter what is and I'm going to help them work through their mistakes is better than if you fuck up, then I you might be out. Yeah. To be fair, though, other to people, be fair. other people's little kids are the worst. <clears throat> they should be told. That. I agree, especially yeah. like three year olds. Yeah, yeah. The three year old boys, all they want to do is punch you in the crotch. That's yeah. all that they want to do. And then they discover their wiener, and they just like punch themselves in the crotch. <laughs> all right, John three sixteen and seventeen, or did we? Uh, uh, just do that and did, see. Did uh, we do what you wanted to do? Just, just do that and see what comes of it. All right, let's do that. John three. 16, 17. This is why tablets haven't really taken off because they're not easy to type on. Especially when you're old and you have fat thumbs. Yep, old and fat. That's me and my thumbs. All right. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have, have, have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him. I think we just talked about this in church a couple weeks ago as well and and did the old, hey, do you know what 17 says? Yeah. And so that there's a reason I brought it up. Good. I'm glad I was vindicated by your reading of the verse I suggested. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's that. <laughs> but very often we're sort of taught the chapter and verse things ruins it. There were no chapters and verses in the original text. It was just sort of, that's not how it existed. So we added them and they can be helpful. However, it sort of taught us that each verse is equally applicable all the time because you memorize verse, single verses. Yeah. And that does a disservice to the bigger context that's often going on. You know what? I'm going to start going up to people at uh, live sporting events who are holding those signs up, and I'm just going to bring with me... And, and 17. And 17. <laughs> I'm just going to throw it up there too and be like, John 316, and 17. <laughs> but even 316 is this beautiful picture of for God so loved the world, which sure. is a counter or maybe a counterbalance to the idea that you don't earn it. You don't deserve it. 
maybe that's beside the point because God loves you enough to X out that earning and deserving. As a thought experiment, can you guys, does, can you come up with something in your life that you love that you think is, has, has no value is, is just not valuable at all. We're not, there's no worth in it. There's no value in it. Ooh. Uh, probably not. So I, I, we were just talking about video games a little bit. Yeah. Because apparently one of Andy's daughters, oh, yeah. can I mention this? Yeah, no, it's okay. fine. Yeah. Okay. My, my youngest daughter, she used to be my gamer kid and we would like, Play and together. I played games all all together, and I mentioned to her yesterday. I was like, "Hey, I was thinking about moving the uh, PlayStation from downstairs, the like community area, to upstairs in the uh, in the studio." And she's like, "Yeah, okay." Didn't flinch. Oh, that hurts. And I was like, "Oh, uh, that means that era is done. We're not playing vids anymore until I get her to come up here and play vids with me, which she will." Maybe. I mean, when the kids get together, they they play Jackbox and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. That's a little bit different. But but it it, it got me mentioning, like, I'll, I'll probably be playing video games until I die. Yeah. Now, if all I did was play video games, it's not worthwhile. It'd be a waste of time. But video games as an outlet to decompress um, entertainment sure. in healthy amounts. And by healthy, I mean not as much as I play them sometimes. But oftentimes <laughs> I realize... And Lisa does too. When Zach's in front of, and I just did third person, awesome. When Zach's in front of the video game for a significant portion, it's like maybe Zach is processing something or or, uh. or dealing with something. And so she gives that to me in a way that's like he needs this for now. And my wife's a powerhouse. She would she would speak up if it's like okay, knock that shit off. Let it's time to get back to reality. But oftentimes she knows the difference between like, okay, he needs this for now. He needs this outlet. And uh, so even that as as seemingly trivial and, oh, it's just entertainment. You're wasting your time. No, it, there's still a good goodness to that. So video games came to mind first when he asked the question. Yeah, because, yeah, it seems trivial. It seems like, uh, but it's not trivial and there's value to it. Yeah. It's it's worthy. Or watching a, watching a TV show oh. that's not Christian, you know, maybe it's violent. It's this dr- whatever drama. There's so much good content right now, but you're watching it with your wife, and you can talk about it afterwards. Even your kids, like whatever you're watching together, you can end up talking about it. And so your entertainment can be a means, a springboard to greater conversation. And even connection. if it didn't, even if it didn't, entertainment on on its own has value. Yeah, yeah. There's an industry about it. I don't know if you've heard about this yet. So Zach, there's an uh, entertainment industry. Turns out they like little kids. Anyway, uh. He's it, looking at you, Diddy. That's what you said last episode. <laughs> <laughs> Another Diddy reference. Uh, Dave, anything from you? Anything that you can think of? Do you love worthless things? Just love them. Well, I'm sure I love worthless things to other people. But, but to you. For me, they're not worthless. Yeah. So I don't think anyone can come up with something that's absolutely I know. worthless. So that's the point, right? I, I'm just, I'm picturing the odd incel type that really loves porn and is unapologetic about it. You might have found the loophole. But they're not going to say it's worthless. Again, we think it's worthless. Yeah. That's actually a good point. But also maybe you can, so from their perspective... They see value in it. They see value in it. And it, those values can be, like, my video games can't, that value can be perverted. I can abuse that value. So that's that's true with anything. That's cool way to defend pornography, Dave. I'm not awesome. defending anything. No, you're but pro- like, you're a proponent of it now. Let's say you have someone who is I know what you mean. Ultra depressed, and they want to sit in their bed all day long. Yeah, we're not going to see value in that, and it's probably not healthy for them. But long term, while they're doing it, it might be what they need. But hopefully, they get other things oh. taken care of that there they might need. be a season where they need porn is what you're saying no no not at all <laughs> <laughs> dave by the way that won't get you fired from this podcast no oh, no what I, will is improper switching and yeah. making a mistake on the audio and you haven't even been fired yet i know i'm i'm 
I'm I'm not going to be fired. What does that say about our podcast? That yeah. Dave's love of porn will not. <laughs> At least I'm honest about it, guys. Dave's love, love of. <laughs> We're totally throwing the you under the bus. Of, all I'll, right. I'll, I'll take it. Okay. Throw me under the bus. Um, You went through, and feel free to, if you don't want to jump into this yet, but you went through and you, you were able to pull some some new responses from our feedback. And we've said it before, one of the coolest things about us moving to the YouTube platform has been all of the comments and feedback that we got. For years, we were like craving it. Because we wanted to hear from from other people and get their other perspectives on stuff. Yeah. And so now we have it. And it's like flooding in. I think one of our recent videos had like 80 comments on it. Yeah. Um, and quickly. Yeah, yeah. Super fast. And so I love that because I'll, I'll peruse through them. And like sometimes, like you were saying to Courtney, like I've got to put the, uh, the shield on a little bit. And like a shield is something you wear. I don't know. I'll put up the shield a little bit and be able to like go through those and not take them very personally because uh, I just tell myself that they're Russian bots. Yeah, honestly. But I like the meaningful ones that aren't the meaningful ones by meaningful Russian bots. Yes. <laughs> and I feel like we have a higher percentage of meaningful Russian yes. bots. Female. Then uh, maybe female Russian bots. Fem bots. Fem. I don't know what you're trying to say, Dave. Um, Porn. What? You're fired. <laughs> Dang it. I was doing so good. Um, I do feel like... There's that do word again. I do believe... I do... I, no, shit. <laughs> what do you do? You should just... I, what, the more I think about eliminating filler words, the more I use them. All right. Here's the next thing that's going to happen. This is a new rule. If okay. you say that for the next 30 seconds, you automatically have to take on a deep Savannah accent. For the next 30 seconds. I do declare. Well. Well, app- tiny. Apparently, the, the things that have been said inside it, of the it's in comment your, section. It's in your Morgan Freeman It's register. deeply in there if you can get into it. Yeah, that's it. I didn't realize he was more Georgia than I expected. But if you go there in your mind, you can see that the comment section is full of goodness and evil. All right. So, <laughs> I don't remember what I was going to say, I believe. Well, so, that's all right. Okay, so we've got some comments. Let's but get real quick, actually. <laughs> now I remembered something different. I'm sorry. Uh, Zach, you're fired on Dave's behalf. Okay. One of the things people commented on the most was the fact that I believed her F-bomb, but she really did say fuck. Oh. She started out by saying F that, and yeah. then at the end, I believed it. For the purposes of the short form content, we don't believe things um, in, on the long in the long stuff, unless it adds to the comic relief. But more people were thrown and concerned. Not more people, but a lot of people. Yeah, didn't matter her point. And even though you know it was a different, con- there wasn't full context, so you you don't know her point unless you know her. Yeah, but people were more thrown by the fact that person said the f word than the content of it which is an interesting interesting scenario and some of the comments were i cannot believe you guys you men allowed a woman to disgrace herself right by using the f word right which is another thing worth mentioning because that people hate the f word now and the having that, drinks with dudes yes I think that, there, there was, was a, a comment of those. about that right and so it's worth mentioning because obviously if you stumble upon us and you don't know us because you are following the tag Christianity or Jesus or whatever, we're not for you if cussing is going to throw you. If you're going to miss the broader point because occasionally somebody says the F word, we're not your target audience. Look. Or you're not our target audience. We say it out loud, but you're saying it in your heart. So who's really wrong here? I like that. <laughs> And even if you don't say the F word in your heart, it's often a version of that where it's like, oh gosh, dang it, where you're angry and you vent a little bit and you don't, whether you say it out loud or not. Sure. The way the words are oriented and the current culturally deemed offensive words will change over time and it does change over time. So, so it's, sir, Sermon on the Mountain, uh, how many murderers are within our comment section here? Because that's the 
that's the parallel. That's the, that's, that's how Jesus describes it. You know, if, if you, you hate have, somebody, if you have hate in your heart for somebody else, then it's the same as murder. And I like that because I think a lot of, I, I think a lot of people would say, I, I just really don't like it. I'm, I'm not using the word hate to describe it. Like that's not the point. Jesus is, I think, using some hyperbole to be be like, check yourself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that is, uh, there's a lot of hyperbole in the Sermon on the Mount in general, and I agree with that. And I don't think disagreement and hate are the same thing. So there there are oftentimes, and I love those. Yeah, correct. The comment section that comes through when we get disagreements from you guys that challenge us, and uh, that's. Fine. I love that. That's that's oftentimes more interesting. That's the point of the podcast is to have good dialogue. And sometimes we agree, but if we disagree, we're going to do it. It's not an echo chamber. Yeah, it is not a echo chamber. An echo chamber. Thank you. Okay. Can I uh, can I read a couple of these or, and and or do you want to hit up uh, mention some of the new subs? Let's hit those subs. Okay. New subscribers. All right, new subscribers. Thank you for subscribing this week. We'll name a few of them. Rosa Rodriguez. Go ahead and articulate this very well. <laughs> this isn't real. Actual real subscriber. Oh my gosh. Pootie Tang 69. Uh, Pootie Tang 69. Thank you for subscribing. Caden Crockwright. I had to be careful saying that one too. <laughs> Dean C. Liddell and Antonio Gabriel. Hey, everyone. Thank you for subscribing. It means a lot to us. Seriously. Um, and and when you add to the comment section, it means a lot as well. So we really appreciate you jumping on the Bros Bibles and Beer bandwagon. Uh, the fourth, Which is only getting bigger. The fourth of the Bs. Okay, let's talk about some feedback. This is on the uh, Robert Morris episode that we put out last week. So... If you're a podcaster, it's episode 240. Thank you. At Roland Tonini 6407, one day you will also stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Oh. And you will also have to answer for these incorrect answers that you spread here in this media. What if my answer to the incorrect answers is also incorrect? Two negatives make a positive. Roland Tonini, let me know. <laughs> what if my answer that's already incorrect is incorrect at the final judgment. You I, guys, wish, I do wish Roland would have told us which of the answers were incorrect. I think this person might just be a fan of big churches or something. Okay. Do you, Have you guys given any thought to the final judgment? Does that affect your life in any way, Dave? Like, like right Andy? now? Just Cur in general. Currently? To the final judgment? Yeah. So One day you're going <clears> to <throat> have to give an answer. By the way, I mentioned it before. And it's for your works. I think th I think what you do... I, I so then I'm in trouble. This. If that's true, I'm in trouble. <laughs> All right, go ahead. What you do on earth matters. Um, 100%. Because the earth matters. And I think God cares about the earth. And he cares about what happens here on earth. He also cares about eternity. I still remember being in like junior high at, at a, uh, a, a summer camp. And... The speaker got up and he was he he gave his talk and at the end he was just describing the concept of salvation and kind of the, the idea that it would be judgment day and someone would be laying out and showing you all the things that you did wrong throughout your whole life all the sins that you committed and he said you know at the end of that thing of that list he goes I just want to like look at that person and go yeah but I'm with I'm with him like pointing to Jesus. And he, he he said, if and when that day happens, like that's what's needed. I'm with Jesus. That's that's the part that matters. And yes, live your life like you believe that when you're here on earth. That's that's the quickest way that like that's my earliest um, that I can think about when I've like tried to deconstruct or not deconstruct, but like imagine or dive into uh, judgment theology. Are you afraid of using that word deconstruct? Uh, it is a little played out. Maybe. Yeah. No, I, I don't know if I was deconstructing it. I just might have misused that word. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Did, well, are you going to answer your own question? What's my question? <laughs> Do you ever think about judgment? No. I'm judging you right now. 
No, mostly because currently I do not, I don't take those things literally. I, I take most of these Bible passages as wisdom literature. And so even though Revelation is apocalyptic and that's a certain genre and they use lots of terms and wild imagery to, to bring points home. Yeah. And I grew up in an environment that overemphasized the literalness of those scenarios. So the idea of basically waking up, like, let's say there is this final thing, the afterlife, there's heaven, there's hell, whatever. There's something after this sure. mortal coil. I hate that phrase. I'm sorry. Ugh. Sounds I, gross. There was a I used to listen to Carcass a lot. This really thrashy death metal band. And they had a song called This Mortal Coil, and I think that came to mind. <laughs> Regardless. This mortal coil. Where did the I wonder what the etymology was that, man, Dave? Do you know? I do not know. Okay. <laughs> Can you look <laughs> that up? Why are you here? <laughs> yeah. A good producer would have already looked that up and been like, here's why. Well, give me a computer. <laughs> A third computer. Uh, I don't know how to use it. It's an Apple. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, let's get to another. Re- read us the next one. Yes. Jennifer, keep on fighting. 7561. Hey, I just found your channel. Nice. Nice. Yesterday, our Sunday school teacher played one of his videos. One of Robert Morris's videos is what she's talking about. Wait, hold on real quick. Yeah. Is she in Sunday school? That's what I I didn't I didn't read it that way when I first read the comment, but as I read it, I'm like, is this a child? If so, tell your parents to not let you watch this show, <laughs> or just make sure they know what's going on, and uh, you know, don't drink if you're under 21, and if you're over 21, drink responsibly, <laughs> and be careful how you use your f words. Yesterday, our Sunday school teacher played one of his videos my heart, my heart was beating like crazy i left questioning my reality too and wondering why we continue to watch someone i always sensed was a little pervy oh the teachers know what's going on and played it anyway i felt sick you guys i appreciate you sharing that uh, jennifer and yeah that's again back to some of our comments during the episode is we the big platforms, we want to protect them because that we f- feel like they're doing ultimate good. Yeah. What do you think is going on there? Do you think that they're like, is this obliviousness? Oh, I didn't, I don't, I don't even have a phone. I have a flip phone. I'm not sure what's going on in the world. At her word, the teachers know what's going on and they play it anyway. So we'll just have to go on that assumption. Dude. And, yeah. Why would, I don't know. Why would you, for Sunday school? Maybe like, it's, like may- the, there's not enough content out there. Yeah. Well, we made it through all the rest of the Sunday school content. And guess what? We don't have any more felt boards to be able to show them what it looks like when Noah avoids <laughs> the flood via the gigantic ark and putting <laughs> all the animals in two by two. Yeah. Okay. Guess we got to play Robert Morris. Hit it. <laughs> That's an obvious transition, Andy. Yeah. I don't know what you're missing. Um, yeah, I'd feel a little sick too. By the way, Sunday school, I think some, I don't know if it's in the South or the Midwest. I think sometimes there's like the Sunday service, which is the sermon in church. Yeah. And there's also like a class that's Sunday school, but it's for adults. I might be wrong about that. Okay. Anybody can let us know, but uh, thanks for giving us that. All right. Jennifer. And, uh, Jennifer, here's my recommendation to you. As someone who is an elder at a church, I think it's worth you going and talking to an elder at your church saying, hey, this seems weird. And depending on what their reaction is to you might help you decide if you should stick around at that church. I if agree. You see something, say yeah. something. Yeah. Nice, That Dave. is a see something, say something. Okay. Uh, defender of the podcast, Legendary Dave. Dave. Legendary Dave. Dave. Millsap. All right. One way you can do better by uh better of avoiding having a wolf in sheep's clothing who may devour children or marriages is by only putting men in those overseer positions who aren't seeking it and are living as healthy leaders in their home with a happy marriage with children whose children bear evidence of such being above reproach. This would oh you want to in- interject something? Well, just while I thought of it. 
who aren't seeking the overseer position. Yeah. Which falls under my, if you want to run for president, I'm not voting yeah. for you kind of a thing. <laughs> yeah. People who want it probably should have Which is every presidential it. candidate. Yeah. But, but yeah, if you want it too hard, then yeah, that's a, that's a big red flag. This would exclude men who've, who've been forbidden from marriage and the normal sexual behavior that comes with it. It would exclude men who've not experienced being responsible for vulnerable people. Vul- sorry, vulnerable people. I can't say that word. Who rely on him to be selfless in his acts for their well-being, not looking for anything in return, i.e. fathering children. So he's saying married men who are not narcissistic and looking to hold power are the ones who should be sought after. Um, I do I do agree with the idea that, that um, someone's family life needs to be examined when they're being considered for a leadership position in the church. And I think that's in, that is biblical. That's, is it Timothy that they talk about like how to, how to select well, yeah, what's deacons the fruit, and overseers? What's the fruit that's being born? Like however you interpret those things. If your house is in big a big picture. In, yeah. If your house is not in order, then. Uh, if your house is on fire. Yeah. But you know what's wild is, now I'd probably quiggle, quib, quiggle. I like to quiggle with Dave. I like it when you quiggle with me. Gross. Dave, oh. you're fired. <laughs> You can't fire me. I've already been fired. Depending on how he defi- defines that last half of it, like I would quibble with it, but we're not going to go that. We're not going to deal with that right now. But how many times do people whose house is on fire, figuratively, they go to do something in order to save it? So I'm thinking of the person whose marriage is shit is drawn to doing marriage advice to people. Uh, the therapist yeah. that their ma- life is a mess and they need therapy, but they go into school to be a therapist. This happens so often, more often than people would <laughs> want to admit, where it's like the thing you're trying to fight yeah. against or that you hate about yourself, you address in other people. And so I th- I think there's... Um, if we had a different kind of setup, I would have you pull up a clip from Jesse Lee Peterson where he interviews a uh, dating expert who had been divorced twice. <laughs> it's a, pretty much exactly what you just described. Maybe they're just really good at dating. That's why I've been, they've been married uh, so many times. Jesse Lee Peterson, real life troll. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, on the atheist video, Knuckle. Why I Became an Atheist is what it's titled. That's right. And it's not. Only on YouTube, not on podcast. Any of us. Actually, it was part of the bigger podcast, but whatever. Sorry. Caveat's done. Am uh, I fired? <laughs> <laughs> Knuckles to O. Zero six. <laughs> Gosh, man, this is really unnecessarily difficult. May you find Christ again. Good works with strong faith. Be a righteous man. I think he's encouraging the the gentleman in the video that we that we um, played. Or he was talking to Zach. I think that's what he's talking. He's saying, I, I hope so. Or he just saw why I became an atheist. Oh, and didn't yeah didn't headline, watch headline skimming yeah. I, when I read that, I was like, "Oh, I hope he's I hope he's talking to the to the guy that we played the video of who who stated that he was an atheist." Okay, uh, next one, uh, Marco G H. Where does it say in the Bible that sola scriptura is all you need? That's redundant, by the way. Um, sola scriptura means the Bible is all you need. Scripture alone. Please tell me. So I'm waiting. Yeah, I, I wonder. I wonder what this individual is thinking. So, did we talk about that? No, but oftentimes. So, what what are the solas? We're not reformed, but the reformed faith it's faith alone, Bible alone. It lists a bunch of them, and so none of us said all you need is scripture. But sometimes people become atheists because they have such a they have such a outsized view of scripture where essentially the Bible becomes an idol. And when the Mm. holes get poked in that balloon, they throw it out because that's all they had was their interpretation of the Bible, not even the Bible, but their Their interpretation interpretation of of it. Yeah. 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 The Uh, the way that they've constructed it. Yeah. Yeah. So let's move on. Uh, B 34 R E a one, which is real with a one B 34 real B for real. I got it. <laughs> it's like a license plate game, right? Go for it. I'm a little slow. As an agnostic coming from a Muslim background, 
This was very refreshing to share. I feel like Christianity and Islam have very common similarities that both religions have that we don't really discuss. Thanks for posting this. Dude, there's a lot in this one. Yeah, I appreciate that. I don't know. I I know there are some beautiful things about what the average Muslim believes. And kind of like the Bible, the Quran, there's going to be stuff in there that it's easy to pick apart. Sure. If you take it out of context and there's going to be beautiful things in there. So I appreciate that. I appreciate that comment. I have a good friend at work who's Muslim and man, we have awesome uh, meetings together. We'll grab lunch and some, or like when we need a break, like go for a walk around the office or whatever and have really deep, meaningful discussions on faith and mostly you're just telling him to read Romans 3:23, right? Yeah, I'm explaining to him where he's fallen short. Yeah. And needs the uh, he's fallen short of the glory of God. You're and, a good Christian. Yeah, I made sure I let him I know. think on judgment day you'll be fine. Yeah. But what's weird is I've I've I noticed that um for some reason I feel way more open and comfortable like sharing exactly what I think and what I feel with him than people that I know are Christians actually. At like people who are openly Christian at the office, I'm like less inclined to have those kinds of conversations with them than I am with him. Because Christians are judgy. They they are, and maybe there's some safety in the fact that I'm like, hey, uh, they can be. They usually are. They can be. More often than not, you're judgy to say that. So I, you proved the point exactly. <laughs> Wait, you're still a Christian, dude? Most of the time. Okay. Oh, prove it. Uh, like what? Come to church? <laughs> that's the only way you can prove it in America. That's literally that's the only the way. the only way it can be proved. No, but uh, but I, I love that. And that's really cool to hear that, that someone who uh, would, would say that both an atheist, but coming from a Muslim background, that they're finding something refreshing in this. Um, what I find refreshing in my conversation with my friend who's a Muslim is that we don't, neither of us is in, is on, like has a hidden agenda to, convert the other person it's mainly a discussion where we get to share hey here are the things that i believe here's what i struggle with here's how here's what i think about god here's what i think about the world here's why i think these things are this way what do you think about that and understanding it there's understanding good and faith like, conversation and and yeah and we like it, we embrace the things where we have commonality and to like to your point there's a there's a lot of commonality in there and and that's okay we can share a lot of commonality and have our differences, and that's why we get that there are different religions that exist. I'm not universalist. This is not p- to be translated as universalism. I'm just pointing out that there's commonality. Too late. This is on YouTube, so <laughs> we'll get those comments, I'm sure. Yeah, you, you're properly edited short that now we'll be like, <laughs> Andy, everyone is going to heaven. It doesn't matter <laughs> what you believe. You can believe in anything. <laughs> Bully balls go to heaven. Holy balls? Bowling balls. Oh. <laughs> what did you say? Bully balls? Holy balls. Well, you know what? What's their uh, uh That save? is a bowling ball. Yeah. It's got holes in it. <laughs> Redemption. <laughs> Would you like to come to my Christian bowling alley? It's called <laughs> Holy Balls. <laughs> That's perfect. Oh my gosh. That's perfect. Oh. Hey, we're looking for funding to uh, start Holy Balls, so... <laughs> We, <laughs> you can email us at dave at brosbiblesbeer.com. Dot edu dot I'd AOL. I'd come to that church. Yeah, I'd go to that church too. I'd go, I would go to that church. Holy Balls Bowling Alley. I bet the righteous gemstones have a bowling alley in their church. <laughs> All right. Uh, did, you read that one. Okay. Uh, next one. Aston Winter. Funny how the host said ignore that last part when the man in the video said, I'm happier. It's possible to be happy without a religion. I'm an atheist, and to be an atheist is to accept that there is no evidence in a god. I recommend all those that are not scared to think go to look at videos from Alex O'Connor and Richard Dawkins. And I appreciate that. So I'm the one that said ignore that. And I get how this individual interpreted that because he he rattled off why he became an atheist. Yeah. And then he went into, I'm so much happier now. Yeah. Yeah. We just reached the end of the context that I wanted to hit. And so sure. ignore that was probably a poor choice of words. Although I do, I follow a few creators 
online that are former Christians that their stuff is basically like, see how magical my life is now that I lost God, that I don't have God anymore. Dude. And so that that is a thing where I think you're trying too hard. I think this is a little bit of you're just trying to dunk too much and I don't believe you. I think I think you struggle with things more than you're letting on. Now, in this individual's case, I have no evidence of that. No, you don't. But But that wasn't my point in this case. I was just like, let's just move on to talk about what he said before the things why he became an atheist. Well, it's maybe we can double click on this idea of of uh, be, becoming an atheist makes you a happier person. Um that that could be true, but what first came to mind for me was that scene in the Matrix with Cipher, and he has a choice where he's sitting across from the the agent, and he has a choice to say um, the steak scene. Yeah, the steak scene. He's, oh my he's, god, he's, that he, steak is rare. He holds. He, yeah, he takes a bite of the steak and he so and he takes a bite of it and he goes, "I know in my head that this steak isn't real." But my brain is telling me that it's juicy, and it's tender, and it's flavorful. I'm kind of like paraphrasing here a little bit. But at the end of all this, my he ma- says, "My mouth is watering." He says, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna sell out Neo to you." But he goes, "When it's done, I don't want to know nothing. I want you to erase it all." And he said, "I want to live in total ignorance." Mm. And that's it, the the concept that's being portrayed there is that ignorance. Quite literally, is bliss. I will be happy. In I my, think he used that in my exact ignorance. terminology too. Yeah, and so, so there is that argument can be made that yeah, maybe you're if if you are living in that way, you've you've made a decision. You are happy in, in your ignorance. Now, by I the way, I have seen. I don't know who Alex O'Connor is, but I know Richard Dawkins. Everyone should know Richard Dawkins. Um, by the way, didn't and I'm he- not scared. I am scared. Yeah. I've I've seen his stuff. I, I don't disagree. You can be happy. If you're in an, imp- an impressive religious environment where if you, you've experienced abuse or in this gentleman's situation, he wasn't, people didn't have answers to questions and didn't seem wanting to answer those questions for him. And or so he like, didn't seem to want to hear the answers or hear that there aren't answers to everything. Right. Maybe. Um, but... And so that's why he left. I, I, you can find fulfillment with m- a multitude of worldviews. Just check your fruit. What's what? What yeah. fruit is falling off that tree of whatever I- ideology you're following? If it's love, forgiveness, agape love, if that is sort of the landing place, I don't care what the label you give it. I think it's of God. And maybe that's a controversial statement, but that's where I'm at currently. All right, read the next one. <clears throat> All right, actually, do you want to? Do, should we pick maybe one or two more, and then we can land this plane? What do you think? Oh I, well, I like the last one short. We could, or this one short. Joshua Duncan. Y'all Theobrogens sound almost sensible enough to abandon faith yourselves. Keep thinking. You might get there. I am there sometimes. Is, <laughs> I am there sometimes. Is he... That's a that's a vote for atheism? It's it, a vote for abandoning your faith is what he's suggesting? I take it as a compliment. Like, hey, you guys, you guys aren't totally closed off like some Christians I've been a part of, like, according to him. I'm reading into it. But I take it as a mild compliment, and who knows if if that's where I think the truth leads me. I'm not afraid to go there. Uh, I just am not. I don't think that's where the truth has led me so far. Uh, okay, let's do one more. Let's do one more. Well, there's two big ones, and they're, they're both worth mentioning a portion of at least to give them recognition for being thoughtful. All right, then let's do let's do two. Who cares? We own we own this podcast. And by the way, both these next comments, I don't know. You might not. Even, you don't need to read all of them. Okay. But I already chopped these like in two thirds because they were long, and I really appreciate that. All right, let's do. Yeah. I'll do a uh, Brian Simpson five seven two one. Nathan, 
Him too. Oh, Brian not, Simpson. I did the, the comedian. Uh, yeah, My brain just automatically went there. You're uh, watching some Kill Tony? Yeah, go look up Brian Simpson. You should look him up. He's a great <laughs> comedian. Nathan Simpson, you should go look him up too. He's awesome. All right. He might be your father. Uh, maybe. Maybe this is the same. Maybe Homer's your father. I don't know. Depending on how you define faith, you're absolutely wrong. Period. If you define faith the way the Bible defines it in Hebrews 11.1, now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Not everyone in the world utilizes that definition of faith. The Bible basically claims that faith in anything, but particularly God, is confidence in what we hope to be true without having observable evidence to validate the claim, which is why it says assurance about what we do not see or observe. Real quick, um, I guess he's just, He's just kind of talking out into the ether. He's not really talking to us when he says, depending on how you define faith, you're absolutely wrong. He's just making a general s- statement, right? Yeah. Because I don't remember saying anything in that episode that was contrary to this. Okay. I agree. Okay. Uh, the issue with this definition of faith is that you can apply it to any cl- claim. A racist can claim to have faith that white people are superior to black people or the other way around. Based on I've the never co- heard a rafe- ra- <laughs> rafus. <laughs> A racist refer to their racism as this is my faith, but I get his point. Yeah. Uh, Based on the confidence that they hope for and assurance about what they cannot observe. There are a million other examples, but that was the first to come to mind. Okay. Uh, I agree. I like that. It's hopeful. What what do you hope for? I'm, I'm hopeful for the universal reconciliation of all things. And I think we agreed in that episode that there was the, the idea that like faith, it, it does, it does require that the thing isn't just sitting directly in front of you, right? It's not, it's not an observation of the world around you. It's not testable and repeatable. Yeah. No. Like I don't have to have faith in, in the beer can that's empty right there in front of me. It's, it's there. There's no, there's no hope that it, it will be there. I can see it. But it might not be empty. I mean, there's like molecules that contain more space. And not that are like inside there bouncing around. I can have faith that there's more beer downstairs. And that's based in hope because I'm not really sure if there is. Well, then you should pay attention to your house, Andy. Because <laughs> I know there's more beer downstairs. Thank you. And that's why I need the faith of other believers to help I, me get through. I am more confident in the fact that there's beer downstairs than I am in the second coming of Christ. I said it here first. <laughs> All right, read the last one, and then we'll, we'll uh, close it out. A Dan's life. I also asked questions that e- either went unanswered or the answers that were given were not satisfactory to me. Do you think that's a day in Z life? Yeah. Probably is. <laughs> Sorry. You know what's great about this is my literalism is coming through. I'm like, well, that's our name. That's what they're putting. And Andy is my interpreter. <laughs> and he's like, he's the YouTube. Well, figures you work for Google. Yeah. You're, like, you're like, this is how it works. Yeah, that's how the interview process worked as well, too. They put a bunch of uh, uh, usernames yeah, in front of yeah, me. And they're like, yeah. what's this one say? And I'm like, oh, day in Z life. What's this one say? Oh, I don't feel comfortable saying that one, but it's Pootie Tank 69, I think. We also, we both went to that same interview and I said a Dan's life and they're like, you're, you're not in. And you're like, oh, I think it might be a Dan's life. You're like, we like your thinking. Uh, Mr. Creator, thank you for joining us today. We appreciate you taking the time to come down here. Uh, please talk to Veronica on the way out. She will validate your parking. God bless Veronica. Okay, go ahead. I left the church. Another reason I left the church and looked elsewhere for moral guidance is because Christians would say one thing but do another as well as use the Bible and God to justify lying, stealing, cheating, etc. As someone who cares deeply about ethics and morality, the church failed me. Once I left the church and read the Bible front to back, I realized there was so much of it that I was not be- that was not being talked about or would be interpreted in such a way that would defend things we would consider evil today. I agree with that. I have no issue with people who are religious and go to church, but I think Christians need to realize that they themselves are pushing people away from Christianity. And I think that's sometimes true, sometimes not. And so I, I th- it's a good wake-up call. I love the people engaging with this stuff yeah, because obviously we're Christians of different stripes. 
some very different, but hopefully what comes through is we want to call out abuses when they're happen, happening. We're not going to defend Christianity or a place that preaches Christianity just because it does that. It's more like, what what is actually happening? Let's let's be honest about that. And I think that is drawing some of these people that are atheists that are consuming the content. And this is, I'm catching a common theme here, though, which is a lot of... Um a lot of people are chiming in with this idea of, "Hey, I was get, I'm getting answers that are either, oh, sorry, I'm either not getting answers or I'm getting answers that are unsatisfactory." And in my mind, some of that does it, it ties to two things, which is, well, figure out this is this can be part of you figuring out what you actually do and don't believe. So an unsatisfactory an- answer could be true to Christianity, and you just don't like it, and and and. And that's okay. I just mean like that's that's okay. For, that can be okay for both of you. That can be okay for Christianity. That can be okay for the person, right? <clears throat> yeah. Um, but the other part that I think about too is, you know, be cautious about someone that you're encountering in in a religious context who seems to automatically have an answer for everything. That they shouldn't. They shouldn't have an answer for every single thing, right? Correct. It can't all be explained away perfectly. And so what I what I really appreciate is the honesty usually when having that conversation with someone that I respect on a really difficult subject, tragedy, loss, pain in the world, and them coming back and saying, I don't fully understand why this kind of stuff happens. I don't have a perfect answer for you. And whatever answer I'm going to give you isn't going to be satisfying. And I recognize that. Like right away when someone is open and honest with that, like that's so much that's so much better. I can walk away from that going like, okay, well, I, I I may not have reached the answer of satisfaction. Like I may not have walked away with all my questions answered, but I respect that person and, and I can recognize that maybe I'm coming closer to being okay with not everything being answered. And that's why I mentioned it last episode. I just love the pastor types like Art Greco, Todd Redarmel. Yeah. It's there. There are unknowns. Th- sure. Those are pastors that are have been close to me over the the decades. Me too. Uh, Jeez. Uh, what was that noise? Uh, 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 I don't know. Yes, you too. But th- they will say, "I don't know." And, and what I love about, I don't know if it's directly applicable, but the story of Job, which is part satire, part parable. Wisdom literature, I don't view it as a blow-by-blow historical analysis of God taking bets with Satan. But Job's questions, God doesn't answer them, but God's not offended. And I'm not saying that's the way you interpret that book, but that's one element of that book where Job has tons of questions. Is he not offended? No, God doesn't give him the answer. God's not like, how dare you ask questions? Well, there, there is a little bit of like, I am the Lord, your God. You know, I I do. I, I think there is this long diatribe that God launches into, which is like, who the hell do you think you are? A little bit of that, or maybe a lot of it. But regardless, Job isn't afraid to ask God the no. questions. Well, and he's, and he's righteously justified in asking those questions, right? Like, I think we all look at that and go, yeah, if I was in yeah. his position, I'd be like, what the hell? And it's but, worth noting that the his friends are using sort of a Deuteronomi- Deuteronomistic uh, theology where it, if you, you do- mean Deuteroni. Deuteroni. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we are. Our the- we're Theobrogens. Theobrogens. But it, there's this element of the friends, you must have done something bad because- why else is this happening? Yeah. Which you find in elements of the law in Deuteronomy. Yeah, they're living And so the karma. friends the friends are sort of justified biblically. I know that's incomplete, but it's worth just generally saying. But also Job's like, actually no. And then and God's like, no, consider Job. <laughs> God's like, hey, go fuck with Job. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be our short. God <laughs> said, go fuck with Job. <laughs> But essentially, he's like, go mess with Job because he's not going to turn against me. Yeah. Yeah. And 
And it should it should beg the question, well, if then if things are going well for you and that equals the blessing of God, what does it mean if things are not going well for you? True. And that's problematic. And I think that's the core of what Job was getting to. But but God's response is like it said, Who the hell are you? Hey, do you know who I am? Do you know what I've done? He's like, I've created the heavens and the earth, I make the winds blow. Yeah, and make the skies storm, and his his. It's not a comforting response to Job. It's not, and it's frustrating, especially to someone. And I'm going to do it. So, if losing a child was on your bingo card for tonight, then take a drink. Or that's not bingo, but whatever. But as somebody who's lost a child, Job being restored and getting all his stuff back and getting new kids. Like, ah, yeah, that God, part- could you do me a favor and? Give me my old kids. Give yeah. me my original kids. Everyone should have a problem with that one. And and hopefully, like to your point, maybe it's not intended to be like I a, don't think a it's historical no, no. A historical document documentary of what nope. exactly happened. Um, especially the idea that you've got someone that's somehow um transcribing a conversation between Job and God. And Satan and God. And Satan and God. The Satan. Technically it's not Satan the individual that we've come to know and love as a podcast <laughs> but uh back then it was the I'm accuser gonna, uh, hey, you say, if you're shoes. interested in uh, that conversation that you was a joke. email zach at zach at brosbiblesbeer.com i don't know if that exists anymore because we used to have a website brosbiblesbeer.com but unimportant so yeah 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 all right yeah whatever jeff know. we miss you this week man yeah. Dave, you only were fired twice tonight, which is not bad. It's probably par for the course for you. I I'll, think I'll do better. Close, yeah. Closing thoughts. Yeah. But just never stop loving porn and just like telling the world about <laughs> oh how much God. porn is good. Dave. I, I'm going to be me. <laughs> send, I love that he's not even fighting our jokes. <laughs> send more. I'm Wait, submitting. More grace. I'm just submitting. More sin, more grace. Exactly. And I think that's exactly what Paul meant, is that the more porn you consume, the more you're forgiven, Dave. Well, I heard a wise man say, if you don't sin, you can't be forgiven. I don't think I agreed with that, but... I mean, the logic is sound. I feel like it's pretty sound. All right. Yeah. I'll subscribe then. (laughs) I'll subscribe (laughs) to the podcast? I think I'll do that, yes. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> All right. Finally, do you do you have any closing buttons to put on as we've sort of thrown you under the bus? Yeah, producer Dave. If you can't figure out the porn stuff with a joke, then you shouldn't li- listen to our podcast. Yeah. So get the hell out. Or heck. I th- I think uh, no, I don't think I have anything actually. Okay. What? Wow. I was, just, I was enthralled and enjoying the conversation. Okay. All right. Wow. All right. Well, we got uh, brosbiblesbeer at gmail dot com. Yes. I. What's the voicemail? Uh, Which we still haven't speak, got one. Speakpipe.com slash bros. Slash bros. Or bros Bibles beer. Just do both of them. Yeah. Leave, leave us a voicemail if you feel like it. The comment section though. Keep blowing up the comment section. We or love it. you could literally email us with a voice memo from your iPhone if you really felt it. And we would we would play it. Yeah, we'll do all that stuff. But uh, bros Bibles beer on the, all the socials, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you find the best podcasts and if you made it to the end i do uh, how about this um if there's a topic that you'd like us to dig into cam we didn't forget about you you did have a request for us and we actually talked about it and we'll, we'll work on that but if you have a topic that you'd like us to dig into hey let us know in the comment section let us know uh via the socials whatever it is we'd be happy to jump on that and see if we can uh, start to incorporate that into some of our episodes I like it because they can't all be reaction videos. No. Reaction videos get the most clicks, but we want to maintain our heart and soul, which is just being real, raw, and honest about actual theological issues that we're dealing with. So, yeah, I agree. Part of it too. I agree. All right. So, for Zach and Dave, I'm Andy. This is Bros, Bibles, and Beer. Grace. Peace. Dave. Love. No! Don't. Now you're really fired. God, now you're fired, Dave. Grace, peace, cheers. Get out, cheers. Dave. Cheers. Don't even <laughs> press stop there. Just get out. <laughs>